can you see the presentation yes sir okay. yes sir thank you thank you bitch yes sir that's right national education policy 2020 this we did in many forms we did first the general policy then we did the pedagogical structure then we did the assessment then we did the skills and the evaluation we did it in many parts and you might have forgotten it so i am taking an opportunity of revising it but today the focus is different the focus is what does the policy expect from schools that are affiliated to the cbsc because the cbsc schools have already to follow the cbsc affiliation bylaws the state statutory laws the central government statutory laws like right to education the pasco act and now this so how will the cbse schools balance and what is expected of a cbse school so whatever i am going to tell you in this these are the things that all cbse schools are expected to do as per the policy i read this i want you to read it rather than i read it Yes, sir. Uh, the changes that have been occurring in the world have been occurring very rapidly now. You see, what used to take ten years to happen happens in ten minutes now. The only example that I can give you is that the Stone Age, or the Iron Age, or the Bronze Age, they lasted millions and millions of years. But when we came to the Atomic Age or the Sputnik Age, it lasted only twenty-five years. and after the sputnik age we came into the age of information that didn't last even 7 years we are presently into the age of innovation and creativity whatever field of life you take be it economy be it uh, agriculture be it politics changes are so rapid we will have to prepare our students for this rapid change you will say what does that mean why prepare them students are already prepared to accept a little of change and adapt to it but unfortunately sometimes the change happens so fast that it disturbs a person some of the changes have been happening during the last 5 6 months and you can see the upheaval it has caused in our lives number 2 the jobs that are coming up now in various sectors there are jobs and there will be jobs but we don't know the names of these jobs the changes that are occurring in the society we can't even imagine what the future is going to look like the technologies that we are using some of them have not been invented as yet we have come to the artificial intelligence and to the machine learning we have come to the robotics but there are many other things that are happening to which the names have not been given to it. and we need to prepare our students for all this besides the world is coming closer it's getting more interconnected there is no question of living in solitude there is no question of living in isolation either for a student or for a school or for a state or for even a country we are living in a world which is dependent upon one another it is an interconnected world our children have to understand that my perspective alone cannot be the right perspective there are different perspectives to the same problem there are different world opinions about the same issue he has to appreciate them he has to learn how to interact with people from other faiths other communities other castes with respect and successfully and he has always to be a responsible citizen of the world we are whatever is done is done for the well being of all and the world is sustained we call it sustainability let me go here what are we going to deal with if the children are to be prepared in so many things as per this new policy because the first line of the new policy or the first stanza says a global world and it also says we want to be leading in education also an educational setup in our country for which we should be appreciated so i'll be talking about what schools are required to do in terms of planning in terms of enabling their access and retention what are the guidelines and the frameworks they are required to follow and how do they provide resources about teachers i'm going to read out 
what capacities are they going to build how are the teachers going to get qualified they have to forget the chalk and the board and use a new pedagogy how do they achieve standards how do they cut across various themes and how do they engage with parents in a positive learning environment about students we'll be talking about their assessment without judging them giving them an opportunity and how to track so that we always are after them so that we are always in know of what our children are doing and then we are going to point out one or two things where there can be no negotiations these are non negotiables let me look at the first aspect of the policy that the child is at the center of everything we do you may give it other names you may say our education is child centric i'm not talking of education i'm talking of the policy overall the policy overall is focused on child the child is at the center of every decision we take every action that we propose to take and what are the responsibilities of our schools i want you to look very carefully because this all we have done still then we are repeating it now what is the plan of activities required for the schools to implement the national education policy 2020 i have used the word plan 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 because there is nothing possible without planning what are the activities that you will plan according to the nep 2020 firstly your own school development plan last time we did it under the heading principles pedagogical plan school development plan the entire plan of how you are going to develop your school especially the elementary child care education especially those first five years which we call as the foundational years what are your plans going to be for them what is your plan going to be for the development activities of the entire school what plans are you going for to make for the children with special needs and also the gifted children now children with special needs will mean children who may have certain problems learning problems mental problems or even children whom you find as weak in studies you call them poor learners sometimes they are retarded sometimes they are not able to keep pace with the class so even those children are children with special needs and the other spectrum of it the other end of it is children who are specially gifted the talented ones Uh, when you say of remediation and enrichment remediation covers the special need wala and the gifted children are covered by your enrichment classes what plans have you brought into pl place for including in your school children from socially and economically deprived groups of the society the tribals for example the children who have never seen what a school is like the first generation learners children from the poor labor labor class children who have been collecting rubbish from the streets these are children who belong to our society but they belong to that group of our society uh, those demographic divisions of our society where we have not been able to reach till now neither do they know of what a school is the second part we will have to upgrade our pedagogy of teaching my focus till now has been on this we have to incorporate into our schools the latest pedagogy the new methods whether you call it playway whether you call it discovery whether you call it experiential whether you call it problem solving approach whether you call it uh, the the discovery approach of heuristic uh, method whether you call it the communicative approach of uh, why god sakhi whatever it is now these methods will be required to be changed according to the needs of the structure at which we are teaching i can be teaching at the plus 5 at the 5 level at the 3 level at the 3 level or at the 4 level the foundational the preparatory the middle and the secondary now depending on the level at which i am teaching i will have to use a new pedagogy the pedagogy that is used at one level may be of some use at the other level but it will not give us the results now the second point is very important and i'll be taking up i think this month by the close of this month by the end of this month i may take one session on this how to plan our lessons grounded in real life situations 
our knowledge you know is divorced from the realities of life the lessons we deliver are predominantly textual and content oriented as a result of it the child is not able to maintain a kind of a unity of thought and unity of action what we need to do is plan our lessons in such a way that they are connected to the experiences of the child the situations that he comes across in life or that he is going to come across in life we have also to plan how do we promote multilingualism is it by introducing two or three languages or more than three languages is it by introducing a language that is not prevalent in my state and teach another language of some other state say a student in up being taught tamil and a student in uh, tamil nadu being taught hindi i mean this could be multilingualism we have also to implement a plan for achieving the goals of foundations of literacy and numeracy i did tell you that when we tested students of class 8th and class 5 we assessed the learning outcomes of the children we found that they could not read we found that they could not do simple calculations or computations of mathematics therefore the new policy lays a lot of emphasis at the stage of 1 to 3 1 2 3 4 5 on foundations of literacy and numeracy then the question shifts to from planning of activities in the school to upgrading of pedagogy we come to tracking the learning of the students tracking is maintaining a record of it and how do we do we do that firstly we have to make a plan as to how do we track every child is not a question of class averages it's not a question of that uh, my children are more than 80% doing well it's a question of having achieved the minimum learning outcomes and those are to be achieved by every child we have to also learn how to make a report card a report card that captures the uniqueness of each child because every child has something good in him he may have, he may be deficient in english and mathematics but he may be good at music he may be good at sports we have to capture that uniqueness and develop a holistic report card a report card that gives us a clear picture of all the aspects of his personality academic physical social emotional cultural it should reflect that then we have to understand that the new examination per pattern has an assessment system which focuses not on content but on the competency of the child it focuses on the learning outcomes of the child it focuses on what the child is capable of doing achieving is he able to read is he able to write is he able to speak is he able to understand certain words and give us their meanings it's not questions on vocabulary that will be given to him but he is to assess this now i use the words plan 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 i use a quote from benjamin franklin he said beautifully if you fail to plan you are planning to fail you don't need to fail but some people without they are knowing deliberately fail why do they fail because they do not plan if you plan then the chances of your success increase the chances of your failure decrease so you will have to plan for all that i go back you will have to plan for the activities which are based on the nep you will have to plan for how to upgrade my pedagogy you will have to plan for assessment and how to track my students i move further how do i enable access and retention of my children in the school you know what covid 19 has done it has impacted both the teachers and the students and the schools there has been a loss of learning and perhaps a loss of interest both in schooling and this loss of interest that has occurred in the schooling and in the learning you may say that sir we delivered online classes all children learn but they did not learn what they would have otherwise learned there has been a slight gap that loss of learning has to be mitigated you have to do something now as soon as the schools open so that that loss that the children have suffered or the loss of interest that has happened is revealed once again you will have to track progress of each child 
and not allow any dropout from the system. Nobody, no child has to be allowed to drop out from the system of our schools. You will have to ensure that educational approach access is possible and every child is retained even from the socially and economically deprived groups of the society who possibly may have suffered most because of the loss of employment, because of the loss of industrial opportunities, because of the loss of economic, uh, I mean, remunerations that their parents could not afford. So some of these groups may have suffered more. You will have to help children to continue their education and bring them back to school and see that provisions are made to them, facilities are given to them under the entitlement that they have because of the act of right to education. Whatever entitlements they have, you see children who are below certain income, their fee are met by the government, their uniform and books are given by the government. If these facilities can be made possible, we have to do that. You have to involve all the stakeholders. When I use the word all, all starts with the child, goes over to the parent, then the teachers, then the community, then the people or the colleges, the institutions where the child is going to study tomorrow, the employment places where the child is going to get employed tomorrow, they're all stakeholders. You will have to involve all of them and even the local administration, the state administration, be it the state education department, be it the state social welfare department, be it the state support service of health and security, you will have to involve all of them. You will have to enhance the learning of the students by using innovative, creative methodologies of teaching. It's true that children sometimes do not learn in spite of your efforts, but your efforts should not now be in the direction of revision. Your efforts should be in the direction of changing the methodology so that the child learns, innovating upon the methodology. <clears throat> A minor change in your methods of teaching may bring about that learning. You will have to create a very safe and conducive environment for your students, which is an environment for learning and teaching. It's very, very important. Children do not learn in an environment of fear. Children do not learn under threat. If the environment is a happy, enjoyable environment, it is a very safe environment, learning can happen and the possibilities of learning increasing happen. You will have to also understand that there can be other forms of schooling. Uh, the NUPA, that is the, what, we, what we call as uh, schooling where the children who have passed up to class ninth or who have studied up to class ninth can continue their education without attending a school. There is need for some children to go and attend to jobs, to look after their farms, to look after and help their father's business. Such children can also through the National Open School, what you used to call, we call it the National Open University now, there are other forms of schooling. The online could be another form of schooling. Uh, distance modes could be other forms of schooling. You will have to maintain an infrastructure which is always clean and which is inclusive. What does inclusive mean? For example, do your disabled children have facilities of access? Can they walk into your school? Are there no steps anywhere? Do you have a ramp? Do you have a lift? so that a blind child can be carried in a wheelchair. Now this disabled friendly access has to be provided. The drinking water facilities have to be neat and clean. The toilets have to be clean and working. The sanitary napkins have to be provided through a vending machine. The teachers have to be given facilities of an open space, a better staff room where they can work congenially and prepare themselves for their lessons. This was about enabling access and retention. I quote here Nelson Mandela, who said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. You don't need to destroy the world. The weapons are used to destroy the world, but we need to change the world. And when change is difficult, then education is the only weapon. I am reminded of what Kotari Commission said. If you want to bring about a change in the society, if you want to reconstruct the society, well then education is the surest instrument of that social reconstruction. The only way you can reconstruct the entire society and change the entire society 
It's only through education. You have to realize the importance of this course. Now let us look at the frameworks and the guidelines that we have to follow. Firstly, we have to follow the NCF. That is the National Curriculum Framework for Curricular and Literacy Work. Then there is another framework which is being developed by the National Council of Educational Research and Training for fun courses, especially during grade six to eight. Now these are two curricular frameworks which will be available to us by the end of year 21. December next year, they will be both available to us and we are to follow them. We have to develop a report card which is holistic. We have to implement the missions of the foundation of literary, literacy and numeracy. How can literacy and numeracy be brought to each child? This is what we have to find out. We have to assist our state or our union territory where we are, we are living for holding the census examinations that will be held at the end of class three, at the end of class five, and at the end of class eight. So now it becomes clear to us that these three examinations will not be held by us. These three examinations will be held by the state's concern. And the state will call it a census examination. The purpose of this examination is to find out whether the children are achieving the minimum learning outcomes which they should achieve at the end of class three or at the end of class five or at the end of class eight. The state will need our help. They may need our help in setting of papers. They may need our help in conduct of these examinations. They may need our help in collation of this data because then only they will be able to prepare their reports and the combined report of the states will go to the nation. Then quality will be a major factor of this policy. Quality is going to be a very good instrument for improving schools. Now we used to have SQQA, School Quality Assurance and Accreditation, but now we are adding F to it. We are asking for a School Quality Assurance and Accreditation. This will be conducted by the School uh, Educational, so, I mean Council of Educational Research and Training. Like we have the NCRT at the national level, we have the State Council of Educational Research and Training at the state level. And we have the District Institute of Educational Training at the district level known as DITE. This is SCRT, that's known as DITE. So what does it mean? The state will be constituting an accreditation manual. What are the quality requirements of the school? SSSA, triple S A. State Statutory I am forgetting the second S will come a little later. Oh, state school statutory assessment. Statutory means compulsory. Assessment, they will prepare a manual for it. And according to this manual, our schools will have to be quality schools and accredited by. Now, what are the guidelines given to us? Number one, monitoring and tracking the health status of children through periodic health checkups. Periodic may mean six monthly. Periodic may mean quarterly, periodic may mean monthly. Depending on the resources of the school, the health of the students has to be checked and tracked. There can be cases of malnutrition, certain infections which can be alienated or elevated. It can be removed. You will have to engage peer groups, both of teachers and of students and other local resources. You will have to engage them in this work. National guidelines will have to be followed on assessments. Whatever standards are to be achieved, those standards are primarily the MLOs, the minimum learning outcomes. Those st uh, standards are primarily the uh, competencies. How do we achieve those competencies and how to test for those competencies? There will be national guidelines for this. We will have to follow them. We will have to identify children who are gifted. And we'll not have only to identify them and know them by names, we'll have to nurture them. Take responsible action for their growth. Take responsible development for making them grow fully, blossom fully, both at the elementary stage and at the secondary stage. We will have to follow the guidelines of the security and safety of our children. Be it safety and security from earthquakes, from water, from air crashes, or be it safety and security of our children from marauders and explorers who are moving around in our society. 
we will have to facilitate public and private schools by twining them you must have seen a grape vine a grape vine does not have any stem of its own it does not have any strength of its own it twines itself around another strong tree and both grow in the process both grow it is true that the strong tree suffers a little initially but then this twine or this vine gives some strength to the grape tree also now a public school and a private school will have to be twined twined means both will grow like that grape vine and the gig tree but the public school will help the private school and the facilities of the private school will be made available to the public school vocationalization will have to be introduced from grade 6 you know that in classes 6 7th and 8th we will have 30 days of internal training in a craft that craft may be carpentry that craft may be pottery that craft may be floriculture that may be a blacksmith trade and in these 30 days there will be 10 bagless days when the child will come only for learning this craft then we have guidelines resources and support material to be given to teachers on how to develop or foster or bring about multilingualism and how to increase the power of language as i as i move further give me a second i missed one what are the resources to be provided we need high quality resources for both our teachers and our students and these resources cannot be of one at the same type they have to be diversified they can be in the form of books in the form of audios in the form of videos in the form of tv shows in the form of manuals that is diversified diversified resources for both teachers and students students for reading teachers for teaching materials that will include e learning resources like the diksha i would request to you my coordinators my heads of schools to please speak of this diksha channel which is available both on the ncert and the cbse to your teachers and let them go through it they will find wonderful materials and some of these materials can be used right now in all schools we will have to provide pr proper and well equipped labs well equipped means depending on the syllabi we should have materials enough i have seen in some schools we have one material for performing an experiment or two materials and the number of students in the class is 40 you can't do it in groups even though you try your best but there are resourceful teachers who manage to do five experiments at the same time and if they have 10 apparatuses they put four children in a group well trained sports teachers that doesn't mean qualified well trained does not mean qualified well qualified is expected trained who have received training from the national sports authority of india or who have gone to coaching institutes or who understand the provision of sports as an integral part of education we should have playgrounds and we should have sports equipment we should have art and craft facilities not only in terms of materials but in terms of the teachers and we should have resources for vocational courses the every school should have counselors every school should have special educators this is obligatory this is even compulsory by virtue of an affiliation bylaw as well as some circulars issued by the cbse that every school must have a counselor every school must have a special educator they have not been very very fussy about it because they knew that we don't have qualified counselors and qualified special educators available in every part of the country we need learning material for differently able students for example if you have some blind students in your school you need braille books for them you need braille you need audios for them such books which speak such books where i mean uh, you put them to an audio uh, i mean uh, style of teaching and the child can read through a braille book you do not have them uh, I, mean, i mean i'm glad that i have more than 30 of them in one of my schools ICT labs, information and communication technology labs, what you call as computer labs. But when you add the word ICT, it becomes a better lab. There are many other improvements that are brought into the lab which make it an ICT lab. 
and then you need a language lab also compulsorily in every school because if you are interested in creating foundations of literacy and numeracy then every child needs to record what he is speaking and listen to it again to eradicate his mistakes you need to have libraries both online and offline a library which is available in the school stocked with books and you need to have a library which is online where from the child can download in the pdf format in the ebook format his books and read them you need to have a book bank separately for those children who cannot purchase or afford books and here i refer to again the specially and socially and economically deprived groups of the society you need to have an access to digi locker for hpc this terminology is for highly protective p does not stand for protective it's a technical term i mean your your computer teacher may look at it and tell you it has nothing to do with your digi locker but your digi locker comes under an electronic system where you can save every material that you want the children will be required to deposit all their certificates in their own digi lockers the board will be transferring their certificates to the digi lockers so the child can download it any time he wants it and take out a print a print he will take but the original will stay in the digi locker and it's a very useful device now what should the teachers be doing what do we need to do under the national policy for our teachers let's look at the teachers you will have to build capacities of your entire staff and i use the word entire staff it includes uh, the teachers the heads the non teaching staff and then any extend it it means even the parents and the school management their competencies have to be built up their capacities have to be built up you see parents have forgotten parenting for them parenting is the art of bringing up the child in terms of his physical development but for us parenting is psychological care also nurturing also even the management has to build up its capacities and competencies even the staff and the teachers and the head teachers will have to become volunteers for the community we have to prepare them for bringing about a change in the society the minimum that has been provided in this national education policy is is that every principal every head and every teacher must receive at least 50 hours of continuous professional development training in a year in one year the training to be given to a teacher or to a head teacher has to be of 50 hours minimum now school teachers within the school if they need to be mentored then they will be mentored by higher education institutes the colleges in the vicinity which are integrated colleges have beard programs they will have such experts nishtha this is another program i would request that the principals speak to their teachers about it and they themselves set the ball rolling i would like my principals to go through these nishtha programs by attending these programs you get a certificate from the ncert or from the cbse that you have attended and completed this course i would like that my teachers also undertake these online courses very simple very short courses six lectures you get a certificate four lectures you get a certificate you attend to those lectures you answer a small assignment online and you get a certificate the nishtha will have to be made compulsory and will have to be completed by every teacher uh, now teachers will have to be regularly trained <coughs> not only in their pedagogy but they will have to be trained in vocational subjects also our own teachers should learn a little of pottery a little of carpentry a little of candle making they should learn it and steadily over a period of time initially we may start it as a hobby but over a period of time we will have to train these teachers along with the vocational teachers what do i say in this chart will become clear capacities have to be built at all levels capacities come through knowledge come through workshops come through teaching come through development come through training come through mentoring come through advising come through coaching come through learning this has to be a continuous process every school according to the cbse rules which came out about a year back 
has to have a resource center and this resource center has to have a trainer a resource trainer who must be not uh, less than a tgt a tgt teacher is appointed as a resource trainer now this teacher will make the programs of training for the entire year including the principal's training for which he will tell the principal sir these are the courses available where would you like to go this training has to be made whether in house or training at other places has to be made an integral part of every school now some special things to be kept in mind while training teachers there are certain things where they need compulsory kind of a training they need to be specially trained for example the teachers need to be trained in knowing first that every child is unique and he has a unique talent and how that unique talent can be nurtured identifying this unique talent this is what we need to teach our teachers recognizing this talent this is what we need to guide our teachers and how to nurture this unique talent this is where we need to train our teachers see for me as a parent as well as as a teacher knowing that my son or my daughter or my student has a unique talent is not enough knowing and recognizing that talent will not stop the ball game i have to recognize that talent and i have to nurture that talent every talent has specific methods specific process for its development the curriculum and pedagogy that will be used at the ecce and for improving the foundations of learning and uh, numeracy this every teacher has to learn this foundation every teacher has to learn then how to use technological platforms especially the swayam platform and the diksha platform this also every teacher has to learn the basic health indicators we call this health and wellness your four volumes books in four volumes that have come out from the cbse five years 10 years back now these books tell us what are the various indicators of monitoring the health of children how can the health weight and height body mass index color of skin eyes uh, teeth his personal hygiene how can they affect his health and how should the teacher monitor them as soon as he comes across a case where he falls the health is failing or the child is not keeping good health how he is to be reported how to teach various indian languages we may have to train our teachers in different languages how to shift in the teaching learning process from road to inquiry from road to critical thinking from road to cognitive learning and from road to other applied methods we have been following a method which we call as road learning method where we helped our children to cram materials and vomit them out in the examination we have to teach our teachers to shift from this method it's not very easy it's not a gradual shift it's a i would say it's a very herculean task the teacher will be now teaching for developing critical thinking for developing cognitive abilities of the child for developing in him an inquiry based approach and other applied methods of pedagogy now teaching learning in classes 1 to 5 has to be carried on through a bilingual approach it may not apply to you and me because we are purely an english medium school but even then if the parents make a request we have to teach following the bilingual approach with focus on the mother tongue of the child in the home language of the child we have to undertake assessment but what kind of assessment not assessment of learning we have to undertake assessment as learning and assessment for learning i did explain these three terms once but once explained is not enough i take up an opportunity here to explain them once again assessment is used during the process of learning so that it improves learning that is assessment as learning when you use a worksheet you are helping the child to learn better you are not only uh, i mean assessing him for the marks that he got when you give him an exercise when you give him a quiz you are helping him to understand better so that is assessment as learning when you give him a test at the end of a week at the end of 15 days at the end of a term or at the end of 6 months you are trying to find out where the child has learned and what the child has not learned 
if the child has not learnt at certain places and he shows certain weaknesses, you remedy those weaknesses. This is assessment for learning. Assessment for finding out the areas of weakness, assessment for finding out the deficiencies and remedying them. Then when the whole year is complete, you give him a test. This is known as assessment of learning. What has the child learned now during the year? So you are assessing him in that. You have to implement the holistic report card. First, you have to make a report card which is holistic. Then you have to implement it. Implementing it means measuring all the indicators that are mentioned in this card. Then teachers need to be given inputs on safety and health, on the kind of environment we have in the schools, particularly in relation to the safety regulations which we have to take after COVID-19. By after COVID-19 means once the schools open after COVID-19. Similarly, the recent techniques in pedagogy, which have been time tested, are to be used. Only those techniques and methodology of teaching has to be used by the teachers. Now they will not use it on their own. Our teachers will have to be specially trained. So special training sessions during the, uh, I would say enforcement of this policy. If this policy will be enforced in the year 22 March or 22 April, because by 21, we should have all the national curriculum frameworks with us. That means we have one year to do all this, one year to prepare our teachers in all this uh, so that by the time the curricular frameworks are available to us, we start working on them. Then next, what about our qualification of teachers? This is very important. I did discuss it with you that by the year 2030, all teacher training institutions which are independent, the beard colleges which are independent and which run one year's courses will have to be wound up or these one year colleges will have to be converted into integrated colleges, four year colleges. They will have degree courses along with beard. If they have a four year degree course along with beard, we don't have any objection. The government will help them. A teacher by 2030 will only be appointed if he has come out of this four year integrated beard program. At the end of class 12, he says, I don't want to be an engineer. I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be a teacher. He goes for this course. He studies a dual course. He passes his graduation with a particular subject, say physics or humanities, and then he passes his beard also. So that's the first thing. Second, all students at all levels of school education have to be taught by highly qualified, highly motivated, highly passionate, and professionally trained teachers. Uh, you know, in my state, that is the Jammu and Kashmir state, I have teachers who perhaps never went to a school. When we fell short of teachers, we appointed anybody who had a little common sense to teach our children who were going with the nomads from one place to another across the hills. In certain states of India, like Jharkhand, like even parts of remote parts of UP, we have a scheme of barefoot teachers. And these teachers are class 10th past or class 12th past. And we expected that they would improve upon their education and as also upon their training. Now through the new NEPA, that's the National Open School, we have given them a course also as, as a training course in education so that they can be trained teachers. But this will not be possible now. By and by the number of such untrained teachers will have to be reduced. You'll be surprised we have thousands of Montessori trained teachers in India, thousands of entities in India who have done these courses from unrecognized institutions. Not even only unrecognized institutions, they are shops. Not shops in the real sense, but a shop that sells in Karolbag, it sells saris during the day. By 6 p.m. the board changes and it becomes a coaching institute for these children. While as, we have some teachers of NTT and uh, nursery who are really trained. We'll have to identify this. Now qualifications of teachers will have to be according to the National Council of Teacher Education Regulation. 
the national council of teacher education defines what the qualification of each teacher at each stage should be then the tet teacher eligibility test now this teacher eligibility test will cover all stages a teacher eligibility test for the foundation stage will be different than a teacher eligibility test for the preparatory stage it will be different than the teacher eligibility test at the middle stage and different than the teacher eligibility test at the secondary stage all these stages the four stages will have different teacher eligibility tests and every teacher teaching at his stage whatever his qualifications will have to appear in this tet and pass this teachers in private schools will also have to be qualified similarly their tet is important before appointment their interview is important before interview their demonstration lesson is important their knowledge of the local language is also important i cannot be appointed tomorrow in karnataka because i don't know kannad my rashmi ji cannot be appointed in kashmir because she doesn't know kashmiri so she has to learn that also if she wants to be appointed there now bal vatikas bal vatika is where the children come for the play group or for the lower kg nursery and upper kg now these children teachers will have to be predominantly qualified in ecce is a special qualification they say in the beginning at least one ecce teacher should take charge of them then the four years integrated beard program becomes compulsory and you cannot we cannot appoint a teacher in any school after 2030 who has not come out of the four year integrated course career progression allowing teachers to move from one stage to another this will be allowed and incentives will be given to teachers a teacher who is working nicely may be awarded two increments in advance he may be given a higher pay scale in advance for the good work that he is doing then vocational education training will also we have given to the teachers i come to the most important aspect for all of us and especially for my heads uh, i could see rashmi ji kavita joining us i think she has joined somewhere and if she could switch on her video that is off still it was off it may have been on by now because i am not able to see everybody then i have to keep on changing now please forget the chalk and board pedagogy that you were using please forget the chalk and board pedagogy i did change it i used walk chalk and talk you are using chalk and talk i used walk chalk and talk go along in the class take the children with you go out and teach them experiential learning what we call but now this has to change and what are the levels let us look at the stage 5 stage 5 is the foundational stage at the foundational stage we have to be very flexible in our teaching methodology we have to be even flexible in our time table making the teaching has to be done at a multiple level the teaching has to be play and activity based only what about the three stage that is class 3 4 5 1 and 2 has been covered the whole pedagogy has to be based on play the whole pedagogy has to be based on discovery and the pedagogy has to be predominantly activity based teaching working with art and craft materials working with colors enjoying themselves stories role play drama all this at the three that's the middle stage this becomes tougher now we will have to use subject teachers through discussion they will have to teach abstract concepts will be taught through experiential learning within each subject and always there will be an attempt of combining the concepts of various subjects through exploration we call this as multidisciplinary teaching multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary teaching where you find the concepts of one subject and the concepts of another subject and you find a relation between them you try to help the child to understand this relationship and build up this relationship and what about the secondary stage multidisciplinary study that we have started in class 6 7 8 it will build on subject study now but the depth will be greater there will be more of flexibility more of critical thinking the choice of subjects will be varied and this will help the children to achieve their aspirations in life what is the framework that we keep in mind 
while following this. More autonomy to be given to the teachers for what? More autonomy for what? Please understand that although the broad pedagogy is mentioned to them, but they choose the own pedagogy which they find is helpful in the class. I ask my teachers to follow a particular method and teach through this method. My teacher comes to me and says, sir, if I combine this method with another method B, I find that my children learn faster. He doesn't need to come to me. The teacher should be autonomous. He should be free to use the methodology that he finds under the broad category that you will not lecture at the children. Let him otherwise do anything else that he finds is useful. So whatever suits his children in the classroom, whatever pedagogy is found effective by him in the classroom, he uses that then competency-based education and multidisciplinary education becomes important. Experiential learning and activity-based learning becomes very important. Toy-based pedagogy, pedagogy where toys are used, puppets are used, art is integrated with the subjects, sports is integrated with the subjects. Storytelling is a method which is very fervently used nowadays and then Along with every subject, we integrate the knowledge of each subject with information and communication technology. That means we use technology to teach these subjects, both online and offline. Uh, I developed this, uh, or not developed this, I took it from the UNESCO website about 10 years back. Because this is 2020 now, I must have got it in 20. 08 or 2009 maximum by 2010. The methodology of teaching in the 21st century, look at the center please, I'll start moving away from the center. It will give you many terms and you may get interested in some of them and you may start learning them. The 21st century must teach and develop thinking skills. How will that happen? that will happen only through higher order thinking skills. It must encourage collaboration. How will that happen? Use suitable technology, use effective communication, use team skills, use interdisciplinary approach. 21st century pedagogy must use enabling technologies by interdisciplinary approach, by collaborative mediums and by digital tools. 21st century pedagogy must assess students with timely and appropriate feedback, relevant tasks, self and peer assessment, clear, transparent goals and objectives. 21st century pedagogy must develop problem solving using real world problems in context of learning, interdisciplinary approach. Teaching should be done using project-based learning. Interdisciplinary approach becomes important. Collaboration becomes very important incorporating suitable technologies becomes important. 21st century pedagogy must develop what? This was the most difficult part. It took me almost three hours to explain in a school. Fluency of information, fluency of media and fluency of technology. Information, media and technology alone will not do the work. How fluent are you in using that information? How fluent are you in using that media? How much command have you and fluency do you have in using the technology? Then encouraging reflection. How do the children reflect? The 21st century methodology of teaching will be that the child reflects on himself, self-review. He reviews his own work. He reviews where he stands and then he asks another friend to review him. Did I learn it? Let me explain it to you. Have I learned it thoroughly? Where did I not learn it? You teach it to me. It's peer review. One child being reviewed by another child and the self review. Now this was a forget the chalk uh, given by them and I developed it into something of my own. What are the standards to be achieved in this new policy? We have to ensure that our academic standards across all country are the same. And how will they be the same unless we have a guideline? For this, the guideline is being developed by Parak. 
परफॉर्मेंस असेसमेंट रिव्यू ऑफ नॉलेज ऑफ होलिस्टिक नॉलेज पी इज परफॉर्मेंस ए इज असेसमेंट आर इज रिव्यू परफॉर्मेंस एंड रिव्यू आई एम सॉरी परफॉर्मेंस एंड रिव्यू असेसमेंट ऑफ होलिस्टिक नॉलेज एच के parak will be preparing the national guidelines and these guidelines should be available to us in a year's time national proficiency standards for teachers will be developed this is wonderful so the teachers will know what kind of standards they need to achieve this will be kind of a code of conduct which we have presently for the teachers npst national proficiency standard for teachers this will be developed by 2020 by national council of teacher education the standards would cover expectation of the role of the teacher at different levels of expertise and stage and the competencies required for that stage now what will be written in this npst it will tell you that this is the competency we expect in you if you are teaching it at this stage if you are teaching at the foundational stage this is the competency that we expect in you all states and union authorities will be controlled by a body which i told you is known as the sssa state school standards authority the state will decide what kind of standards are to be maintained by each school and they will establish this standard and give it to us which we will apply the sssa will establish a minimum set of standards based on basic parameters what are those basic parameters safety of children security of the building and the children the basic infrastructure the number of teachers in depending upon the number of subjects and the number of classes we have the grades we have the financial probity worthiness of the school and the sound processes of governance because in some schools we see the process of governance are so bad uh, I, i did tell you that 20% of our private schools in the rural belt have already been closed now is it the discretion of the management to open a school at any time they like and close it at any time they like or is it the discretion of a management to call you for an appointment today and dispense with your services tomorrow i mean we call it the golden handshake policy followed in india this was done in america but now it's done in india there we used to call it the hire and fire policy you hire a person and pay him as per his work and then if you do not approve him you fire him but here it's not done here the principal calls a teacher or the management calls the principal and says good morning sir we have been so happy with you but unfortunately because of some reasons we cannot go along together here is your salary of one month as your notice period we don't want it is this the methodology in which schools should be governed is that the kind of sense of security you are giving to your teachers and then you are this time disclosing most of the information on uh, the cbse websites some information we do not disclose we think that it's private information and the cbse does not compel us to disclose that information i remember for 5 years we fought that we will never tell you the qualifications of our teachers and we will never tell you their salaries uh, i remember when the cbse director asked me mr handu do you think there is a genuineness in this demand i said yes sir how i said sir if i write i am paying 40000 to a gentleman in my school another school can read this information decide to pay him 50000 and head hunt him and take him away from me why should i therefore tell you if you are looking for a good physics teacher for your school you can look at the staff that i have because i am in a close proximity of you within 1 km you can see the qualification and one of them that fits you you can start sending teachers to his home persuade him guile him uh, give him some incentives and pull him out i won't i won't uh, release this information but later on the cbse decided that certain things we should reveal certain we should not similarly in this sssa there will be clear cut disclosures financial disclosures of the institution what are your revenues what are your resources how much money does flow into the institution every month how much does go out in terms of salaries this information academic information operational matters what are the processes that you have set in place and how do you every school will have to give this information this is basically setting up a quality standard keeping that in view then we have 
I'm sorry, I'm going moving a little faster. Why, why doesn't it stop here? It should stop here. Just a minute, give me a minute. I'll, I'll make it stop there. All right. Now I was, I was here. No, I was, where was I? Why does it run away from me? Something getting, getting touched. Now, how do you engage with the parents and the community for a better positive environment within the school? Uh, home visits to be done, parents to be sensitized about the physical abilities or disabilities of their children if they are first generation learners. Now, the parents need to become sensitive about it. Workshops on parenting, particularly during examination time, because the parents also are anxious or on certain other issues. Substance abuse, sexual orientation, and other major issues which the parents face on this also, you need to engage with them. Constantly keep on sending information about the school activities and the child's progress to the parents. Please send the portfolios also to the parents for their review and their feedback. Please inform the parents as to what kind of assistance your child needs at home so that the parent gives him that very kind of assistance for learning. All newsletters, emails, blogs, memos, they should be sent to the parents at regular intervals. Parents should be called in as volunteers for working with you on foundations of literacy and numeracy. Whenever you go on a field visit, whenever you have a sports program, whenever you have an exhibition, it may be only an arts exhibition or it may be an annual function or you are, you are writing a magazine or you have a sports function, call the parents as volunteers, they will come. Exposure lectures should be called for the parents by parent specialists, a counselor, a doctor, a sports person, a filmmaker. Please have a parent representative for each class. You can collect the names of all the parents and conduct an election for one parent representative. Or you can have a yearly representative, a six monthly representative or a monthly representative, but that does not make any sense. Please have parent representatives for your class and these parent representatives can help you during the parent teacher meets. You can have certain events only for the parents. Children will not be allowed in those events. Involve the parents of the community by outreach activities, which one of my principals last time said that she was interested in organizing computer science classes or language improvement classes. This is also an outreach activity. Or you can all go together and do, I mean, one, one of the principals said that she had done a, a, a plantation drive. Now this plantation drive could be taken up in a colony along with the plants being taken and the parents involved in planting them. Get better at communicating with parents. This is a blog. What do we do with our student learning? All educational outcomes which you have to achieve at the end of every stage, this will be mentioned in the SSSA. The document that will be given to us by the year 2022, it will be mentioned suitably and assessment will have to be done only in those areas. CBSE will prepare its own procedure of evaluation for 10th and 12th class, the board examination and this procedure will be ready by 202223, 22-23. That means by middle of next year, we will have this procedure and possibly our children of class 10th may appear according to this methodology in the year 23 or year 23, 23-24. NCRT and PARAC will prepare the guidelines and the framework for the holistic report card. So you don't have much work to do. They will give us a framework, they will give us a guideline and we can prepare it. NCRT and CBSE will prepare question banks. These question banks will be questions based on competency-based items. And they will also help us to give us samples of higher order questions, testing HOTS, testing higher order outcomes. Examinations to test achievement of basic learning outcomes, which is very difficult for us. We do not know how to do it. They will give us through assessment of concepts and knowledge and through HOTS, this also will be made available to us. Some other possibilities are 
the board may have a semester system a modular system or an annual system we do not know that the board is thinking on that this is the committee we were framing yesterday planning and academic committee and i'm glad to tell you that my eldest daughter himal handu has become a member of this she doesn't know it as yet she doesn't know it as yet the information will go to her from the board within one or two days a committee that will take a decision about the future plans of cbse and make them operational will the board examination be held only once or twice in a year uh, you must have heard that uh, the minister of education has said that the neat examination and the je examination will be held four times in a year not once four times we expected two times we were sure but four times we didn't know similarly the board examination of class 10th and 12th may be held twice it may be a modular type examination or it may be an annual or semester examination when we say semester that means at the end of 6 months the part of the syllabus that has been covered is over it's the new syllabus that starts in the new semester all subjects and their assessment will be beginning at two levels two levels there will be a general level and a standard level like we have in our class 10th nowadays the mathematics at the basic level and the mathematics at the standard level similarly we will have english at the standard level english at the basic level the tests will have also to be two levels of difficulty i mean there will be a test which will be comparatively easier for those who are going for the basic subjects and a test which will be comparatively not so easier for the children who are going for higher levels moving to adaptive testing testing that helps us to improve knowledge testing that does not help us to fail or pass a child but tests that help us to adapt to the child's ability now board examination will also be redesigned that you already know we have a part of it as objective type and a part of it as descriptive type it was a very interesting quote i want you to read it right questions alone is not good teaching asking the right questions or giving the right questions is not good teaching good teaching is giving of right answers joseph elbers good teaching is more a giving of right questions than a giving of right answers so it's not answering questions that's good teaching it's putting questions that's good teaching i move how do we monitor student learning the teacher should have a system of tracking the students growth where they can understand whether the child is learning or not who is learning and who is not tracking each child must begin with the foundational level so we will have a complete dossier of the child right from his pg as the play group or his nursery right up to class 12 the proficiency levels in terms of learning outcomes which each child has to achieve this must also be done this oh, sorry this also has to be done as early as possible each child has to achieve a mastery level and that mastery level is possible when we track how much of learning outcome has been achieved wherever we find deficiencies we put in our resources the data has to be aggregated it's anonymized there are no names attached to it it's not that a achieved uh, objectives b did not it is all the children 100 children out of 130 achieved 70 did not 70 achieved 30 did not that's anonymized and aggregated unified links the triple ssa and the oasis these are two uh, i mean areas where we will have to upload all our documents oasis asks for school documents and sssa will ask for all documents related to finances academics and other sources there will have to be a pre assessment i'm sorry beta i'm disturbing a lot there will be a way to pre assess the children what does the child know when he comes to me or to a class what needs to be taught to him uh, i know two days back when we met or three days back one of our teachers said that i will be holding some bridge classes well these bridge classes are held only after a pre assessment when you pre assess a child and you know what he does not know then you give him a bridge course so that he comes to the level of your other children also then peer tutoring will become compulsory now one child will have to teach another child 
one child will have to teach another child children will have to teach one another and then pre teaching of the concepts where students are struggling if you find a child is finding it very difficult to go through a lesson you may have to stop the lesson pre teach the concept to those children and then carry the whole class with you and then re teach will have also to be used post assessment after you have gone for an assessment and you find that the assessment 20% students are not doing well 80% are obtaining a pass rate you may re teach the lesson otherwise re teach is not done there are certain non negotiables where no changes can be accepted i mean here negotiations are not required to be done that doesn't mean at other places they can be done that means there can be a slight laxity somewhere but in these areas there can be no laxity teachers who use technology will probably replace teachers who do not technology will not replace teachers remember but those teachers who use technology and who are good at the use of technology will replace those teachers who are not using technology now what is non negotiable use of technology that becomes one number two making education child centric and inclusive you cannot say this child is not behaving well or his uh, uh, performance in the class is not so good or he is an add child he is a dyslexic child he is a child with a learning syndrome we cannot take him no you cannot do that inclusion is a must the quality of teachers no compromises on that the safety of students no compromise on that diversified teaching learning methodology the same method will not work at every stage different methods will have to be followed competency based education and being very flexible sometimes integrating it with art sometimes integrating it with sports the quality of classroom transaction that is the quality of the methodology of teaching has to improve no compromise on that mediocre teaching will produce only mediocre children and a mediocre society we cannot expect that our teachers have to be the best they have to use the most innovative technology which saves upon their time and gives children the best learn performance of each child will have to be tracked a record will have to be kept of the performance of each child skill development will be very important sports is going to be an integral part of our education art and craft is also going to be a very integral part of our education and then the use of information and communication technology i would simply request you please plan you know what all is to be done you may not have grasped this whole i don't mind you can ask for any materials i'll share them with you start planning and then start executing i am going back to what is my in in quality it's my favorite quote the deming cycle the deming cycle is known as pdca p d c a p plan d do c check a act it's the same cycle plan execute execute is put the plan into practice do it we are very good at planning for example my principals last time gave me uh, wonderful ideas about what they were planning to do to increase their admissions if they keep it in the drawer and it stays there well then i know they are not the people who can execute they are not doers they are only planners people who can imagine but if one of them starts acting on those plans that she or he made you will see results will happen so execute the plans put the plans into action monitor when you are planning and when you are executing keep a watch on your plan see whether the plan is going in the right direction does it need more inputs does it need more impetus do i need to withdraw a little of my effort or am i putting a lot of effort and then control the whole process as you control the whole process you will be able to implement the national policy of education very easily i end with a similar quote that i gave to you in the beginning today's schooling is different how is it different because in olden days schooling was about knowledge nowadays schooling is about learning but today's schooling is more about thinking today schooling means thinking teaching means not learning teaching means asking the children to think involving their creativity involving their critical thinking and their problem solving and their judgment 
how do they work teaching them the ways of work including teaching them how to collaborate with one another how to communicate with one another giving them the tools of working what does that mean the capacity to recognize and exploit the potential of new technologies the new technologies are very powerful if a child of today is able to use them well he will open a vista in front of it knowledge gathering knowledge will become easier for him and you have to teach them that look here my dear child you are to become a responsible citizen and you have to play your part very actively in the multifaceted world this world does not have one facet it has several facets it has several aspects and you should have the capacity to live in such a world living in such a world is adaptation living in such a world is acceptance living in such a world is through collaboration and cooperation only i end this up with a thank you to all of you this is a thank you from me to a teacher thank you dear i i think i have done justice to it in 75 minutes yes any anybody Very much I'm, so. i'm stopping this sharing and i'm stopping the recording also